Next, let's talk about electrical potential, which is usually given by V. So this is one of those uh, very subtle differences between electrical potential energy and potential, electrical potential. So, but they're very distinct from each other. So for example, we talked about electrical potential energy before. So a charge at Q, charge, uh, let's suppose that a charge Q at origin and a test charge moves from R1 to Rb in this, then the change in potential energy for this particular scenario is going to be given by delta U equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q1, Q2, 1 over Ra minus 1 over Rb. For a test charge, Q, test charge two times Q1, delta U will be given by U times delta U. For a test charge three, uh, it will be given by Q three times Q naught, which is three times the potential. The potential energy is proportional to the size of the test charge. But what if we want a quantity that is independent of the test charge? For example, how would we do that? We would do delta U, which is potential energy, divided by Q0. That would get, a, get rid of my Q0. That quantity, which is independent of the test charge, is called the electrical potential difference, or delta V. Mathematically, VA minus VB is equals to UA minus UB over Q0. Its units are 1 volt, which is joules per coulomb. So what is the di basic difference between potential energy and electrical potential? The basic difference is this test charge. If you, the electrical potential energy depends on a reference charge Q0. Electrical potential difference does not. So UR, which is potential energy, is equal to QVR. Okay? Or uh, mathematically, oh, sorry, in words, potential is equal to the potential energy per unit of charge. Remember, potential difference is not the same as potential energy. This is one of those concepts that everybody gets confused about. So be very, very careful. So potential difference can also be called as the voltage drop. Potential difference between points A and B is defined as the change in potential energy, final value minus initial value of a charge Q moved from point A to point B divided by the size of the charge. Remember, potential is just a number at each point. It is not a vector. So a potential at a point near an isolated positive charge is positive. Moving a positive charge charge from infinity, where, where potential is zero, to this point where potential is positive, is going to be giving us delta V is positive, so delta U, which is electrical potential energy, is also positive. That means the work will be negative. The electrical force that on the charge has done negative work on it to assemble the system. Potential at a point near an isolated negative charge is negative. So moving a negative chest charge from infinity to this point will be delta V will be negative. So delta U will be negative. That means W, or work done, will be positive. That is, electrical force on the charge has done positive work. And trust me, if you keep the signs together, it all works out in your, in your um, uh, homeworks and in your quizzes. Remember. If a potential is zero at a point, no network is done by the electrical force as the charge moves from infinity to that point. Even though the test charge may pass through regions where it experiences attractive or repulsive electrical forces, it all depends on the final and initial points. The path is, is independent, or how the, it experiences those forces is independent. High versus low potential. In a gravitational field, the mass falls from high potential to low potential. In an electromagnetic field, or electric field for now, a positive charge accelerates from high potential to low potential. However, a negative charge will accelerate from low potential to high potential. So now we have to be very careful because the signs of these charges matter a lot. So a useful pneumatic to remember is electrical field points downhill. So electrical fields point in the direction of the decreasing potential. Okay, so remember that. Now let's do an example. 
A battery powered lantern is switched on for five minutes. During this time, electrons with a total charge of minus eight times 10 to the two coulomb flow through the lamp. 9,600 joules of electrical potential energy is converted to light and heat. Through what potential difference do these electrons move? Now this question gives us a battery powered lantern. Okay, the time that it's switched on is for five minutes or 300 seconds. So electron with the total charge of, so charge on the electron is minus 8 times 10 to the plus 2 coulomb passed through the lip. And it says that 9600 joules of electrical potential energy is converted to light and heat. Okay? What potential difference do these electrons move through? So we are being asked what delta V do these poten what these electrons move through? Now how do I have to how do I solve this? Well, what do I know? I know delta U is delta UE divided by Q. Okay? So that means that I need this potential energy. If this being converted into light and heat, that means that the delta that when I talk about potential energy, sorry, when I talk about delta potential energy or the change in potential energy, this is losing that much energy. So my delta PE or delta UE potential energy has to be minus 9600 joules divided by the charge on the electron, which is minus 8 times 10 to the 2 coulombs. So if I do a little bit of math, what do I get? I get it is going to be 12 joules per coulomb or 12 volts.